All right, well, welcome everybody to week two, day one. We're gonna go over the quiz today. Uh, yes, I have Violet Everrun as the, the background. Okay, sorry, I had to restart because I displayed everyone's quizzes, quiz scores on the recording. Okay, so better this time than before. Uh, I did tell you that it'd be uh, easier this time and uh, I did intend for it to be easier. So, um, the uh, questions were as follows. The expulsion of the Acadians from Canada led in part to the creation of Cajun culture in Louisiana. Yeah, absolutely true. Not a trick question. I, I mean, even though it might look like I do trick questions, they're really not. Um, they're quite straightforward. It's like with the, uh, the Museum of Us thing, it was like it made a very straightforward claim that was just wrong. And in this one, it's a very straightforward claim that is right. So um, the um, British government expelled a bunch of uh, French colonists or who were nominally French. And they ended up traveling down to Louisiana, those that didn't die in the process. Which there's a massive amount of people that died as they're expelled. Um, wouldn't it be Spanish Louisiana instead of Louisiana? It's still Louisiana. It's Like I said, it's not... It's not a trick question. Um, and Cajun culture in Louisiana uh, could be the modern day as well. Um, so the uh, yeah, it's, that's how it was. It's, a, it's an event that uh, not a lot of people know about, um, I guess, which is why I picked it. Uh, Evangeline. I have caps lock on. Uh, yeah. So there's a uh, famous poem by uh, Longfellow, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, um, about the expulsion of the... It's a batch on the lily. It's funny. Um, follows a Cadian girl named Evangeline and her search for her lost love. Da, 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 da. So my, uh, my grandfather used to have the entire poem memorized, which is where I first heard about the, the expulsion of the Acadians from. Uh, yeah, huge event in human history, and yeah, it's most, mostly people don't know about it. Is that the lady from Ant-Man? Uh, yeah, isn't uh, Evangeline Lily Yellow Wasp or some... Yeah, Wasp. So, uh, second one, uh, the 13th Amendment made slavery legal in all cases in America. Um, also false. So, um, 13th Amendment made slavery, sla slavery illegal except as punishment for a crime. So, as uh, um, uh, we, we like to say that slavery is illegal in America. Not true. Um, Slavery is, in fact, still legal in America. If a judge sentences you to hard labor, that is slavery. So, um, if you look up the 13th Amendment, you can read the original thing or you can go to the Wikipedia page, you know, either way. And find... Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as punishment for a crime. So, still have slavery in America. Prison labor is is a thing. High school is still a thing. <laughs> okay, so uh, California uses it for wildfire control, and prisoners get time off. Yeah, yeah, and 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 the the, the worst part about it is that if you're a prisoner, you can't uh, work as a firefighter. So all the job experience they're getting trained in uh, doesn't help, right? Let's say some prisoner does a fantastic job and discovers a love for firefighting. Can't do it. You're a, you're a convicted felon. Sorry. So, um, <laughs> high school hit a bit too hard. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, basically. What we want to see when you're a critical thinker is just look at a claim, 
see, you know, is the facts in line with, with reality. You know, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. And, uh, even though it's pretty straightforward, it's still pretty tricky. If you know what I mean? Like, you know, as you, as you can see from the, from the score results, there's still, there's still a lot to it. So we're going to be talking today about piracy. You've heard of software piracy before. Um, we're going to talk about the, oh, it's too bright. Uh, we're going to be talking about the pros and cons. Is one of the one of the big things about critical thinkers is the ability to think about topics in terms of pros and cons. So, I'd like for you guys on the Discord chat channel now to outline some of the benefits of piracy and some of the negatives of piracy. And, and we're not talking about high seas piracy here. We're talking about software infringement. Don't copy that floppy, that kind of stuff. Uh, my boy Richard Stallman would probably get upset at me for using the word piracy like this, but everybody knows what I'm talking about. And I tend to use terms that are simple and straightforward. I don't, I don't like jargon very much. It is always morally correct to pirate from Adobe. <laughs> People who can't afford it get access to ex expensive software, yeah. One of the uh, one of the interesting things that came out from uh, my era was that one of the reasons why Photoshop took off so much was because it was so wide it was so widely pirated that uh, high school students who otherwise would not be able to afford the eight hundred dollar price tag or whatever it was I don't remember exactly how much it was but it was a lot a high school student would not be able to afford Photoshop so um, they pirated it and they learned how to use Photoshop using um, a pirated copy and as a result it's quite a popular tool now like their success an internal memo from adobe has listed the widespread piracy of adobe as um one of the one of the reasons for success you wouldn't download a house would you <laughs> all right i'm gonna have to play that i don't know how many people uh get that get that reference here uh, am i gonna get a copyright strike for playing don't copy that floppy that would be funny. That'd be really funny. Okay, I'm going to try playing Don't Copy That Floppy. And um, we'll, we'll see if YouTube flags it for a copyright violation. That'd be really, really ironic. Okay, uh, Don't Copy That Floppy. And here, let me close my screen. Should have used never gonna give you up. <laughs> I don't know, I might I might get a I might get copyright strike for that too. Alright, let me switch it over to there. Okay, can you guys see that? You see in the video? Okay, here we go.
Yep, so that's <laughs> you wouldn't steal a sausage. <laughs> that's funny. Don't copy that floppy. Yeah. Do you want to download that? <laughs> uh, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Okay. Yeah, so that's uh, that's what life was like in the nineties, I guess. Um, is that Linus from Tech Tips? Not the cool Linus, not Linus Robald. It's <sighs> too funny. All right, so, so just over here. So yeah, so that's uh, that's the business world's argument against piracy, right? Nintendo on the way to cease and desist. Yeah, maybe we'll 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 find out when this gets uploaded if if uh, I get a flag for that. It should be really really funny, especially since they want to get the message out, you know. Uh, okay, so yeah, so piracy in this context again is not uh, that high seas piracy. You're stealing things. It is um, downloading software, a free copy of software, basically. My uncle doesn't totally have a bunch of burned CDs of films. Yeah. Stealing a car affects an individual and pirating Photoshop hurts a company and not an equal comparison. Um, yeah, also, like, I, I think the, the core difference that my boy Richard Selman would make is that uh, when you steal somebody's car, like, you deprive them of that car, right? So, like, if um, you, you break into somebody's house and you take their, um, their katana, like, what happened to me? Um, then, uh, then that person no longer has a katana. So, if you copy, they still have a copy of their things. That's why it's called a copy, not the original. So, you know that there's there's maybe a hair you could split there. Um, said somebody swiped your katana. Yeah, I was uh, I was down in San Diego on a business trip and. Uh, uh, someone broke into our house and uh, stole my katana and took my uh, this was in the Xbox One era uh, so they uh, they took the Xbox One and they left the Wii U which is I think everything you need to know about the Wii U <laughs> Beef's like nah nobody wants that piece of crap <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so now I have a security grate on the on my house and security system and cameras and all that stuff. So, I take it to get on over the Wii U any day. Yeah. No, it was, it was, a, it was a pretty decent, uh, pretty decent katana. I wouldn't, I wouldn't hit anything with it, but had pearl inlay and it was pretty cool. Had it over my mantle. A Roomba would stop them. <laughs> Put your video games on a safe. Yeah, no, the worst part of that was um, uh, I logged in on my Xbox account on my, my computer. They trashed my office. This this is my office here. They trashed it, and that was the worst part. All my receipts were all over the ground. Um, and I was just like, I am not sorting all those receipts again, you know? Um, I took some jewelry. That was that was actually the worst part. Like, uh, my, grandma, my grandmother-in-law, I guess, gave my wife some jewelry and all that got stolen. So that was, that was really sad. But um, I went on to the um, Xbox website and saw that they had logged on as me. And I was like, oh, you son of a bitch. You're online right now as me because it automatically logged me on. And so I contacted uh, Microsoft. I'm like, hey, by the way, my Xbox got stolen. Uh, they're online right now. Could you tell me their IP address? I want to track them down. So, you know, I can like get my, get my stuff back. You know, call the police, you know, get them arrested. You can crack open this case. Microsoft's like, no, we don't do that. I'm like, could you at least invalidate the Xbox so it can't play online? You know, they're like, we can log you off. That's the best we can do. I'm like, it's a stolen Xbox. Could you not let them use my Xbox for anything? And they're like, no, we don't do that. So, uh, yeah, so that's theft. Right, because uh, because they stole my Xbox, which had my saved copy of Assassin's Creed Black Flag on it. I was no longer able to play Assassin's Creed Black Flag, right? 
all my saved uh, collected music notes of sea shanties all gone, all right? Whereas if they had simply broken into my house and copied my save file of Assassin's Creed Black Flag, yeah, I don't know. I don't think I'd be mad. <laughs> Would you be okay? I don't know. Like, they, they still kicked down my door, you know, just how they got in. But, um, yeah, that's why, like I said, we have security grade and... Um, I mean, it did help us upgrade our security. In terms of absolute money, they didn't, I guess, take that much. But still still stupid, stupid annoying. Yeah, I know. The sea shanties are hard to get to because, like, you find a music note and then the music note starts running away from you. So you have to, like, parkour through these, like, pirate islands to, like, I, I, ironically, pirate iron, islands. Uh, you have to parkour around them and um, and chase down the, the notes to, get, to unlock all the, the sea shanties, you know. Randy Dandio and stuff. So, uh, make sure you secure your RTX 3090. Yeah, my, my house is secure now. So, um, but uh, yeah, lesson learned. Anyhow, um, so yeah, piracy is uh, piracy is different from theft, right? So, what your next assignment is going to be is you are going to go on to the discussions section of Canvas. Did you ever get to play Black Flag again? I bought it for Steam. And um, it just isn't the same with keyboard and mouse. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's just not a... It just doesn't feel the same. You know what I mean? So, yeah, there you go. Got it on, got it on Steam now. So... I guess I could use my Steam controller with it. Maybe I'll play it again. No, I kind of don't want to play it again because the thought of getting all those notes again just kind of irks me. You will need to pirate a piece of software for your next son. Yeah, that would be something I'd do, huh? Hmm. The CS department might get mad at me though. <laughs> you must, you must locate a pirated copy of MATLAB. <laughs> Um, yo, he has a steam controller. Yeah. It, it uh, they were, they're, they're dumping these things like, um, like really cheaply. Um, after they stopped making them, like they're selling them for like five bucks each. So I'm like, I'll buy one. I'm not really a controller gamer too much, but, um, yeah, it, it's been useful. There, there are definitely some games on PC that, that play a lot better on controller. Um, I think the last two is just live stream a game. Yeah, I'm I'm down for that. Um, I've done uh, Jackbox with students before, so trouble is uh, we've got like 90 people in this class. I don't know. Maybe I can just make the class really hard and flunk you all out, and then get get below the the, the cap limit for Jackbox. <laughs> okay, kahoot. Yeah. So anyway, uh, so what you're gonna do for your assignment today your daily assignment is you're going to go on to canvas onto the csi1 canvas and there's going to be a discussions for piracy privacy no piracy Por yeah there we go so i'm going to turn that on in in a little bit after class is over and what you're going to do is you are going to write an argument for piracy okay and the reason why i choose for piracy is because I have discovered that students can't read <laughs> when it comes to this topic. Uh, like, they, they would be like, like, mentally it's like, why would a professor have me argue for something that's illegal and their brains explode and stuff like that? And, and they write an essay against piracy. And, uh, and it's just like, no, 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 I want you to write an essay for piracy. And uh, use the pros and cons, you know, that we've talked about here on, or having a discussion instead of a quiz. Yeah. So just write a couple of paragraphs, you know, what are the, you know, make an argument, make an argument why we should pirate software. Okay. And everybody has to do that. And then what happens on Wednesday, 
10 a.m. Start a class. Deadline. The deadline cuts off. Good. It's only a couple paragraphs. You can all write it. Whatever. Um, and poor one game so pirate. I was showing pirate a PS5 right now. Yeah. So then on Wednesday, you will be assigned two students to respond to. Okay. So do on Wednesday, you have to write a couple paragraphs why people should pirate. You're going to make an argument. An argument is a claim supported by evidence. That's what I'm grading for. Did you make a claim supported by evidence? Okay. Don't just make a claim. Just be like, don't be like everyone should pirate. Present ideally some sort of fact or figure, some sort of reference that's reputable. You know, give me a hyperlink that I can look at that will support the claim that you make about why we should pirate. Then on Wednesday, you're going to be assigned two students essays or I don't know if the essays. Yeah, sure. Call them an essay, whatever. It, two students arguments and you have to respond to them in the negative. So on Monday to Wednesday, i.e. right now, this time period, you're going to argue for piracy and then you're going to be assigned two people's essays and you're going to have to argue against piracy. Okay. So you're going to take both sides on this argument. Okay. That's a, a great way of developing flexibility mentally. Uh, one of the signs of an educated person is the ability to argue uh, passionately and well for or against any debate topic. Right. So, um, you know, should it, should America, you know, still be in Afghanistan, you know, most people who are educated on the subject could probably whip up an argument like that to argue why we should stay in Afghanistan or why we should get the hell out of Afghanistan. It's, it's part of the sign of being educated on a subject. Now you have your own personal beliefs. I'm not saying you should believe both, both things, but you should be able to make an argument for it. That's a sign of being an intelligent person. Okay. Um, we are writing for privacy, not privacy, not privacy, not privacy, <laughs> not, no, not this one, not this one, this one. <laughs> so, uh, that, that did, that did happen, uh, last year as well. People are arguing for privacy. No piracy, piracy. Um, and, uh, and so you're gonna argue for piracy and then you're gonna make a counter argument on Wednesday and a counter argument involves um, um, let's see I actually have a graphic on here somewhere it's this one no that's a Saturday morning breakfast cereal uh, Right here. Refuting an argument. Okay. So, uh, there's different levels of counter arguments that you can make. Okay. Uh, the, the worst ones are name calling, uh, which is oftentimes to me in online conversations, a sign that you've won, right? Cause like if let's say somebody's like really passionate on some topic and you make an argument, if all they can do, do is say something like you're an ass hat, then that means they can't formulate a better counter argument to you, but they're just upset at you because you made a good argument. So I actually, I actually don't get upset usually when, when people start insulting me because that's usually just a sign that they've got nothing better. You know what I mean? They they've lost. It's a, a tacit way of people admitting they can't come up with a better argument. Maybe they could, but they're just too dumb to, who knows? Either way, it works out the same thing. So, uh, the discussion is going to be a couple of paragraphs, like, like two or three paragraphs. Like it's not a major essay or something, but you do have to make a claim supported by evidence. So that's, that's an argument. Our argument is a claim supported by evidence. Okay. And, um, I'll require at least one reference, right? Some hyperlink that I could click on and look at and, see if it supports your your uh, argument for piracy then on the flip side what you're going to do when you're making a counter argument is uh don't uh, don't do these bottom four things here the bottom four things here 
will not earn you any points. Okay, and the the bottom two, the bottom two uh, will will probably get you censured by me. And and sometimes students try and do something like that to be funny, like like, whoa, let me hold on there, bro. I'm just gonna have to stop you there. You're just totally wrong. Mm, don't do that. Like I said, it, humor doesn't translate very well, especially when you're disagreeing with somebody, especially online. And uh, it's um, just just avoid that. Like I said, in this class, our goal is to be positive. And, and you can disagree with somebody and be positive criticism. So I want all of you to practice the hamburger model when you're doing the disagreement. So say, say something you liked about what they wrote, disagree with them with something on it, then finish with something positive as well. Okay, hamburger model. That's what you're going to be judged on mostly. And for your counter argument, what you what you can do when you're trying to pick apart somebody's argument is there's a couple of good ways of doing it. Okay. So for example, if you uh, if you find that they misquoted the source, for example, for example, if they say that Forbes magazine says that uh, piracy causes a billion dollars a year in, in losses to the economy. If you look at the source, and that's why I've been practicing with you these last two assignments, look, actually looking at a source, because that's what it really means to be a critical thinker, right? Somebody says, um, yeah, Forbes magazine says that. You actually click on it, and you read it, and you see if it actually does say that. And if it does say that, then you click on the source that Forbes is going to be citing from, because they usually don't use original resource. They usually cite from something else. Do you have any accredited sources to back up your claims? No. The source, me. <laughs> right? And so if they don't if they don't have a good source, that's that's a good counter argument. You're like, this is an unsourced claim, you know. Uh, if you follow the reference and you find out that Forbes magazine or whatever they, they quote doesn't actually say that, that's a good refutation as well. If you follow the source behind the source and they find the source behind the source doesn't say it, that's a good refutation as well. And so Boom, there you go. Or uh, you can you can uh, argue that um, their logic doesn't hold. And we'll, we'll go into more of like logic probably coming up this week. We might even talk about it um, Wednesday, maybe. The um, If you can't find a flaw in their logic, flaw in their logic, flaw in their sources, then you have to make an opposing argument. So you have to say, uh, all right, your argument's pretty good, but I'm going to present my own argument and present my own sources for it. In which case, it turns into like a pro and con thing, right? Like there's evidence for, there's evidence against, and people have to weigh it, right? And that's that's perfectly acceptable, and that happens all the time. Like professional people oftentimes don't make mistakes with their logic, and they don't make mistakes with their sources, but uh, sometimes people can just present better evidence Sometimes people just present better evidence for the opposing view. Okay, so you can do these top three things here. Don't do the bottom four. Don't uh, criticize the tone. Don't uh, just say the opposite. There's a great Monty Python sketch that I might play for you if I don't get copyright strike, uh, where uh, the guy goes into an argument clinic, uh, and he goes into a place where a guy just contradicts him. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Over and over again. So the bottom four things here, mm, not good. Well, I don't. You, you have a good argument, but I just don't like your tone. Yeah, that's that's a meaningless counter argument. Okay. Uh, ad hominem, ad hominem. By the way, is not the same as name calling. This is this is a mistake that a lot of people make. Um, if you uh, just say, "Well, you're a poo poo head," right? That's name calling. Ad hominem is n not the same thing as name calling. Ad hominem is when you attack. A person instead of the argument. Well, of course you would say that. You're a blank. You're a Democrat. You're a Republican. Of course you would say that. Well, that doesn't mean they're wrong, right? Like, of course a Democrat would say, uh, would support Biden, right? Like, that makes sense. Doesn't mean they're wrong. You know, of course a Republican would support Trump. Doesn't mean they're wrong. You know what I mean? Like, you actually have to deal with the argument, you know? It's like, okay, yeah, sure. You know? Yeah, probably probably a political operator is going to support his party. That's what they do. But you have to find you have to find the mistake in what they said if you're going to try and disprove them. Okay. 
the grammar police, yeah. Um, well, what you said is fine, but you misspelled... <laughs> you misspelled a word or something, right? How many paragraphs do you need to write? Uh, two or three. It's not a lot. Okay. So, two or three for the uh, argument that you're going to make do Wednesday, and then two or three on the counter-argument. Again, use the hamburger model. I want to see all of you compliment the person that you're responding to on Wednesday. You're going to compliment them. Say something you liked about what they said. Then find a mistake they made. And if you can't find a mistake, then just present your own counter-argument. Uh, I, I, you know, I like your argument for piracy. However, I'd like to present the uh, an argument against it. Uh, here is some facts from the B BSA or whatever that talks about the economic cost of piracy. Something like that. But overall, good talking to you. Well done. You know, hamburger model. Something good, counter argument, something bad. Okay? That's what we're going to be practicing this semester, and this is what I'm going to be grading y'all on. Okay? So, y'all understand? Minor spelling mistake. <laughs> Terminator 2. Skeleting splitting meme. Okay. Do you understand what your, what your job is going to be? You wouldn't download a handbag, would you? Uh, we make a claim that we are for or against piracy. No, no, no. You're going to make a claim for piracy today. And again, again, this is something that explodes students' brains. Right? But, it, but it's illegal. I know. I know it's illegal. <laughs> the whole point of being a critical thinker is you can make an argument for or against. And, and like, I... Rare, very rarely can find uh, uh, an, something that doesn't have both a pro and a con, right? So, so everybody is going to make an argument for, and then everybody is going to make an argument against. Okay, and you're going to be doing basically what are called peer reviews. They will be automatically assigned to you on the deadline of the thing you're writing today. So the thing you're writing today will be due at Wednesday, 10 a.m. And then at Wednesday, 10 a.m., it will automatically assign you two people's things to do a counter-argument to. Um, that process doesn't always work right. <laughs> it's Canvas. Um, I'm not sure why uh, it doesn't always work right. So if you don't get a peer review by, like, 11 o'clock by the end of class on Wednesday, just let me know. And uh, I can manually assign peer reviews. If you turn in your essay late, you don't get a peer review. So I'm just going to set a hard deadline for 10 a.m. on Wednesday for writing it. And if you miss that, you miss the peer review as well. So, um, yeah, all, all the directions will be explained in the in the assignment. But that's that's kind of the two or three uh, in in each kind of argument. Yeah, because you got to You got to say something nice. You got to make your kind of argument. You got to say something nice. So yeah, it's not too bad. And. Uh, it's just, it's just like a, yeah, just read over the thing, get practice reading an argument, looking at sources. Yeah. So it's, um, you're all wrong. <laughs> it doesn't elaborate. Source. Me. <laughs> okay. You guys all understand? It's a fun assignment. And, uh, and so, you know, just kind of sketch out to yourself. Or, uh, I'm a lover, not a fighter. Yeah. You can find all homework assignments on Canvas. Yes. Yeah. All the directions will be in Canvas. It's going to be in a discussion forum on Canvas. So anytime we do a, a for, and, for and against or a debate, you know, you, you, you could call this a, de a debate. Although we're not really trying to win a debate. We're all classmates here, right? And everybody's going to make an argument for and everyone's going to make an argument against. Okay. So uh, the discussions will be on Canvas. This assignment is on Canvas, not not here. Here is for lectures and for class participation. And walks into debate club, you're all wrong. Doesn't elaborate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sounds like an interesting assignment. It is. It is. It is a fun assignment. And I, I just kind of chuckle myself every every time because uh, a student will just write an argument against piracy when they're do, supposed to do one for one. And if you get one of those, like, and you have to do a counter argument for it, just be like. Um, 
professor, this guy made an argument against piracy. <laughs> you know, and, and just leave it at that. It's fine. Okay? So if, if, if you're peer reviewing somebody and they made an argument against piracy, which they weren't supposed to do, just write down, um, I concur. There you go. <laughs> Done. You guys are sad. Free response. Yeah, free points. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you, you made my argument for me. Thank you. Um, yeah, cool. Thanks. Because, uh, like I said, students' brains always explode when it doesn't make sense. Why would a professor do this? You know? uh, is there a site we should avoid for this assessment? Um, you know, it's, it's a good question. Um, it's a good question. The, um, in general, I prefer reputable sites, you know, like I'm going to, I'm going to prefer, uh, nature magazine over, was it art live strong or whatever the, is that live strong? Is that the name of the, let's see, yeah. 15 breakfast skill recipes in mornings and breeze. Um, this surprising sleep hack for couples to help your health and your relationship. All these are clickbait. You see this? Coffee could be good for your brain unless you're making these four mistakes. What four mistakes? Yeah, so, um, yeah. anytime you see clickbait titles like that, it's usually a giveaway. It's probably not a repeatable site. Do we have to respond to multiple assignments or just one? Um, you have to, you have to do both. Yep. And the reason, the reason for that is that we make sure that everybody gets a response. If, um, if we didn't, then if somebody dropped the ball on the response, then that person doesn't get a response. So by making every person do two responses, then it guarantees that each person is going to get at least one response. And then you get to see, how did my, how did my argument hold up? Okay. So honestly, debating is one of the best ways of finding out if your beliefs match reality. Because if they don't, the other person will find it and pick it apart. <laughs> right? If, you, if your beliefs don't match reality, it does not hold up under scrutiny. It will not hold up under peer review. It will not hold up under debate. So these are really good ways of testing your thoughts and testing your ideas. Debating is, is really fantastic for that. You just have to make sure not to get your, your ego involved. Okay. Is this assignment on the discussion board? Yes. It will be on the discussion board on Canvas. Due by the next class period? Yes. The argument for piracy is due. Start the next class period. Okay. All right. So uh, i got seven minutes left. Um, so let's see here. Do you want to save? Yeah, let's just keep that in dark mode. Um... <laughs> So let me, uh, let me give you uh, Richard Stallman's um, views on pi piracy. So I'll, I'll give you an example of, argue, of an argument, okay? So Richard Stallman is the founder of the GNU uh, uh, movement, the Free Software Foundation. He is as influential as Bill Gates or Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak. Uh, Steve Wozniak's really the, the reason why Apple was successful, not Steve Jobs. Woz and Jobs co-founded Apple. Woz is still alive. Jobs is not. Um, Bill Gates is still alive too. Although, I don't know how well he's doing these days with his wife going after him, but ex-wife going after him. Anyhow, so Stallman is uh, uh, Dr. Richard Stallman, honorary PhD. Um, came out to Fresno a couple years ago. Spent the night at my house. I, I put him up and we had a good, good time together. Kind of a weird dude. Cool dude. A weird dude and he made the following argument and I'll present it to you to give you an idea of I, I don't want you copying this argument by the way so, so he believes that um, since there is a core difference between piracy and theft right theft deprives people of the thing that's stolen if you were to steal my game controller back there then it looks like a base doesn't it? it's a game controller it's actually a base, but it's a game controller. Uh, if somebody were to steal that, then I would not have it anymore. And I, I would have to go to uh, the music store 
and buy another base. Okay. So his opinion is kind of biased. It is. It absolutely is. Um, he's, he doesn't claim to be an unbiased opinion. He's, he's making an argument. So, um, so because there is a fundamental difference between piracy and theft, he says that, um, you know, we should not have piracy be a felony, right? It shouldn't be illegal. Instead, it should all be free. Everything should be free to copy. All music, all literature, all software, everything should be free. He's willing to maybe debate on some of these points, but uh, basically free to copy. And then the government, uh, and, and then the downside, of course, to piracy is that you don't get paid, right? Like there's a lot of small software developers that I knew back in the day that wrote software that was widely used and people just pirated it and they didn't get paid. Like one guy, his, uh, his software is used by, I don't know, I think it's like 10,000 people. And he, he made a total of like a hundred bucks off it. So he, he sold like 10 copies, 10 bucks each. And, uh, it was pirated 10,000 times. So he got 0.1% sales out of, out of the thing. And so Solomon's like, yeah, that's a problem. You know, you want, you want people to get paid for their efforts. You know, if, if you put in your time and effort making a song, you know, it shouldn't be free or, or you should get paid for it rather. And so what he, what he felt would be a good solution would be for the government to put together a giant pot of money, right? And then you could just watch the Pirate Bay or one of these piracy websites and just see what people are downloading. And then you give people a chunk of money based on the uh, fraction of, you know, if Game of Thrones is pirated widely, then you give the Game of Thrones people a big chunk of the money, right? And so just, you know, every year, every person in America puts in $200 into the pot. And then you can essentially vote for which artists get your money. You know, if you like Taylor Swift, then you put in a vote for Taylor Swift. If you like Ariana Grande, you put in a vote for Ariana Grande. If you like Amon Amarth, you put in a vote for Amon Amarth. And, um... He, he proposed your share should be proportional to the square root of the number of votes you get so that the biggest artists don't just get all the money. So, uh, you know, if somebody if somebody's a small-time artist and they get 100 votes, that should be enough for them to kind of, you know, get them enough money to keep them making music, you know, stuff like that. And then on, on the bigger side, you know, Taylor Swift's still going to get a big chunk of this pot of money, but at the square root of the number of votes, like, it's not as much as she would get... Um, if it was just a straight proportion. So that that's his proposal. And so basically it kind of deals with the, uh, it deals with the fact that piracy, you know, deprives artists of, of income, keeps, keeps people subsidized making art. It rewards people for making good art. You know, one of the, one of the big problems with some of this, uh, was it Rolling Stones, small artists, Um, you should support independent artists. It's probably not it. Um, so, uh, basically Rolling Stone made an argument that small artists were kind of getting hosed by st streaming music and stuff like that. You know, you, you put up a, you put up a song and then you don't really get paid for it. Like streaming doesn't pay you very much at all. Right. Streaming is actually fairly close to, to this, right? Like your music just goes up into the cloud and as people download it, you get paid. Right. And so, uh, Rolling Stone made the argument that small artists kind of don't get very much out of it. You know, if you get paid 0.04 cents per download and people download your music a thousand times, you get four cents. Right. So, um, what we have currently is actually not too different from it. You know, it's not, you know, streaming would arguably have been piracy 20 years ago, right? Um, so, gonna be real, do not want my money to be used to support Cardi B. <laughs> yeah, is this guy well-known? Yeah, he, he's, he's one of the most well-known person in the, in the tech field. Like, you know, um, um, hmm, uh, Emacs, uh, text editor, um, You've heard of Linux before. 
Uh, Linus Torvalds is not this guy. Linus Torvalds wrote Linux, the kernel, Linux kernel. Um, he headed the GNU project, which kind of built the other half of the operating system with all the utilities and things like that. Um, Linux is, or GNU slash Linux is one of the most widely used software products now. He believes all software should be open source and free, and Libre, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, anyway, so that's his argument. So his argument is that, you know, that that's a proposal that he made. And uh, you can't make his proposal anymore. So I don't, I don't care if you think it's a good one. That one's, that one's off limits. Sorry, got to Got to make your own. Don't pirate my argument. <laughs> don't pirate, don't pirate Stallman's argument. Let's put it that way. Wait, isn't Linux also the problem for TF2 bot problem? Uh, <laughs> I don't know if, I don't know if it's a problem or not. But, uh, Linux is the world's most widely used operating system. So, you know, it's like, it's like saying is, is Windows a problem for bots? I don't know. Just the operating system. Okay. So that is that. Any, any further questions? You're going to argue for piracy and you're going to argue against piracy. Two to, th two to three paragraphs. Not, nothing, nothing too, nothing too extreme. Get you into the, get you into the habit of Rodden, for and against. Okay. Cool. In that case, I will see you all on Wednesday. And if you have any questions about the assignment, uh, it's going to go live in a couple of minutes. Uh, just message me or post on the Help Center. Okay. And I'm going to manually do the attendance for, for last week. Okay. So you should see that going up on Canvas whenever I go through 90 people's attendances. Which might take a while, but I'll, I'll try and get that done as soon as possible. Okay, cool. Thanks, everyone.